Hey guys, welcome back to Laravel 5.6 and React.js tutorial. In this session, we're going to be showing you how to um, retrieve the specific blog information. And what I mean by that is we're going to be want to, we're going to want to click into this link and we're going to want to show the header and we're going to want to show the body text uh, for that specific article. But to begin with, I want to change this from displaying the body to displaying the name tag because obviously a normal blog wouldn't show the body as a link. So what I'm going to do is, in my blog.js file, I'm going to change blog.body to blog.name because that's the field in the database which we want to be showing. Just to see if this still works, I'm going to refresh my app, my app and there we go. Um, yeah, so basically, in a normal site, we would have an A link here and an A link would take us to another URL. But using the React router, we're going to want to use the link element. And to begin with, I'm just going to clear this up a bit. Within our LI, I'm just going to delete this so I can just write it out for you. I'm going to make a link element. I'm going to do link to. And then we're going to do forward slash blog. And then we're going to append. So we're going to do a, a plus blog.id because we know that the id is the element uh, the field in the database which we need i'm going to close this off and then i'm going to do blog.name close the link great so now i should load the link element it's been successful Let's see what happens okay we've got an error link is not defined and let's just open up Sublime full screen and let's see what we're missing. Let's go back to the index.js file. Okay, um, let's just import at the top. I'm actually going to copy and paste this again. Might throw us an error. Not been successful. Great. Okay, great. See if you look in the URL down here, when I hover it, we can see that it goes to blog forward slash one, blog forward slash two, and we can now use this um, ID to make a request to the database and to retrieve that specific blog article. So to begin with. Um, we want to go back to our index.js file and because clearly this is a link at the moment but there's no route defined for it so it wouldn't really go anywhere and um, let's see what happens if we click it on our app yeah see it doesn't do anything it doesn't load any component so i'm going to click back into the blog and we're obviously going to want to make a new um, component so to do that if we go to index.js file we're going to duplicate this and what we want to do is we want to listen out for this specific ID. And to do that, I'm going to do forward slash ID. And then we're going to change this to render equals props arrow. And then we're going to see the component name blog article. dot 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 props props stands for properties by the way and then where's my syntax save it been successful just want to check what's happening on the app Okay, blog article is not defined, and we know now what to do. We need to define it up here. I'm going to do import blog article from doc components blog article. Save that. And we're now going to want to make a file within resources, assets, JS components. Uh, we're going to want to call it blog article.js. And 
I'm just going to copy and paste uh, everything from the blog.js file into here for now. I'm going to delete it, it's just to save some time. I'm going to just render a h1 tag. So, hello. I'm going to change this to blog article. I think we can delete that. I'm going to save it. Build successful. We're going to go back into our app. Refresh. Hit blog. Click into an article. And we can see hello. So, um, we can clearly see that everything is working correctly, but we're not dynamically loading any data. And we know from the parameter we've passed through, it's an ID, which we're going to be wanting to use. And to do that, essentially, we're going to be doing another Axios call. I'm not 100% sure if this is the best way of doing it or the most um, optimized way, but please let me know in the comments if you know a different way. Like, like I said before, I'm not a JavaScript developer. I'm a, I'm a PHP developer. But this is the way I've got it to work. I've done another constructor at the top. I'm going to pass in the props variable. I'm going to do super props. I'm going to set another default state. So set state equals. For this time, I'm going to call it post. And then this is going to give us um, somewhere we can save our post data to. I'm going to do component did mount. And we're going to be doing axios again. So we're doing axios dot get. But this time we're going to change it up a little bit. We're going to be going to force as API force as blog. But we're going to be appending our new ID onto the end. So another plus, then this dot props dot match dot id, and uh, this is how we access the id that we've passed through in our properties. And then we dot then define it in response. We're gonna do this dot set. State. So it's the same as we did previously, but we're just getting one um, result now, basically. Post response dot data, and then I'm going to put a zero in here because we're going to we, we're, we're going to be want to access in the first element. Um, I'll explain what I mean by that later. And actually dot catch because if there's an error we want to display an error console.log error close this off save that just to see if there's any error no great and then down here I'm gonna to want to just just to show you to begin with I'm gonna do a console dot log and then I'm gonna pass through this dot props and we can see the object I'm gonna go back refresh the app click blog and clear this click our article name and we can see this is the object we've got to work with and um, we're gonna be accessing the match um, attribute I think and then in here we've got these parameters ID so that's what we're using to do the Axios request. And just delete that. Within our H1 tag, we're obviously going to want to call the name. So we're going to do that by doing this dot state. So we're accessing this state post, and we've just assigned this data to this post. Do this dot post, this dot state dot post dot name. And then underneath, I'm going to do a p tag. I'm going to do this dot state dot post dot body. Save it. We got an error. 
Oh yeah, because we need to wrap it in one element. Do div. Close the div. Save it. Go back to our application. Click into blog. Click into our article. Now we've got another problem. Um, let me just check what's going on. I've missed the parameters. Yep, so we put params back in. Build successful. We click blog, click in, and we can now see that it's loaded the title and it's also loaded the body. Uh, I'm going to click back into blog, the second one, and we've got the second details. So this is, you know, this is just the bare basics of how to use the Axios. I don't know if this is the most optimized, optimized way of doing it, but it works and it lets us retrieve data for our application, which is great.